In the Sean's palace in Rator, Darno frees himself from the thongs with which the Ratorian traitors Temur and Poltar have bound him. Snatching a sword from the wall, the Frenchman engages Temur in a duel to the death. In the city of Tor, in the great square before Atea's palace, Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk have been bound to stakes preparatory to being publicly whipped. Among the elephants ridden by Atea's guards, Tarzan recognizes Black Maluk, one he had previously befriended. At the ape man's call, the elephants toss aside their riders and charge through the closely packed crowd toward Tarzan and his friends. In the excitement, Wong Tai frees O'Rourke, who in turn releases the others. Pursued by Torian warriors, the three friends escape from the square and take refuge in a deserted dwelling where they are later surprised by the yellow men. Oh, oh Bigotti, I, I hope there's a way up to, to the roof. Take that open casement at the head of the stairs. There's a balcony. Come on, fast. The porch runs, runs the length of the building. If we can get out of sight around the corner. No. Here, Kailuk, put your back to the wall. Up on his shoulders, O'Rourke. You can reach the coping. Oh, Bigotti, I, I can just make it. You next, Kailuk. Uh, too high. I, I cannot reach. On my shoulders. Quick. As the huge Ratorian slips out of sight over the edge of the roof, Tarzan steps back, springs lightly upward, grasps the coping, and draws himself quickly to the roof as the crowd of pursuing Torians comes pouring out of the casement onto the balcony. Come on. To the roof of that other building. They'll be up here in another minute. Oh, Bigotti, and we just got out of sight in time. Here, down oh. behind this coping. When they don't see us on the balcony or the roof, it's likely they'll think we've dropped off into the street. Here they come. I can see them through the chink in the wall. They're climbing up onto the roof now. <laughs> He's going back. He only stuck his head over the top and looked. Faith is the hand of the Lord that's over us. Listen. The gang's going back into the house. Come on, quietly. Let's get out of here. Too likely to be seen. If we leave the housetops, we shall be seen, Tarzan of the Apes. As long as we remain on these roofs, there is not much danger of our being observed. The dwellings are all on the same height. All but the palace. Look, it sticks up there like a sore thumb. If someone happens to look out of one of them windows... That can't be helped. We'll keep below the casements as much as possible as we go. If we can get to the elephant paddocks, we'll hide in the feed shed in Black Maluk's corral till night. And then? Back to the jewel pits. We're going to release those slaves somehow tonight. Faith, and there's a job I wish was already done. But why just tonight? Have you forgotten the feast of Pantu, day after tomorrow? Kai Luke told us the slaves would be taken out of the pits the night before the games. Right. I'd almost forgotten about that heathen celebration. Where do they take the slaves, Kai Luke? The slaves of the Golden Collar are locked in cages in the public arena until the time comes for them to go into the lion feeds. Then we can't wait for the lieutenant and them Rathorians, Tarzan. Uh, we'll break out the slaves and make a surprise attack on the palace without our friends. Is that the idea? Right. If Darno and Uka got through to Rato... Wait, friends. You, you speak of Uka and Rator? Do, do you know Arbashan? If you mean Uka, yes. We helped him to get out of Tor with one of our friends. They should be back by this time with his uh, people. <laughs> by Rator, <laughs> it is good to learn the Bashan is alive. <laughs> we thought him dead long since. A personal friend of yours, is he? I was a member of his hunting party and was captured with him by the Torians. And you say he is returning from Rator with an army? So he said. If they got through and could make it back here in time, then he will be here. A Ratorian does not break his word. Oh, sure. And I wish I were as confident as you, my friend. A lot of them poor slaves are going to die when we start. What is it, Tarzan? The elephant paddocks. Over there. To get to them, we've got to get down into the street. There's another balcony just below. I'll go first. Let O'Rourke down to me, Kailuk. From the balcony, we can drop to the street. Sure, and I'd be right with you, Tarzan. In the Sean's palace in Rator, Darno, engaged in a duel to the death with Temur, the Ratorian traitor, battles desperately for his life. Excellent swordsman that he is, he fights like an enraged tiger. 
He changes ground as guard 20 times, attacking his huge, more powerful opponent from every direction. Furious at being held in check by his smaller adversary, Seymour springs forward to end the battle. He aims a terrible thrust at the agile Frenchman. Donald parries it. As the Rhetorian recovers, he glides like a serpent beneath the huge blade and passes his sword through Temur's body. Ah, yeah, monsieur. Ah, it is finished. May the evil gods of Rato bless you, Paul Donald. Finish it. Strike. That I may not be fed to the lions. Uh, that will be for Monsieur Lachan to decide. You are not fatally yet. You will soon recover. Unless Monsieur Lachan has other ideas about the matter. <laughs> Au revoir, mon ami. I shall return presently. In the vast audience chamber to which Darno hastens, the Shan orders his chiefs and nobles to their respective commands in preparation for the forced march upon the city of Tor. Atari Tarato. Awango look. Wakara. Aluk. Banga, Rook to Taratari. Monsieur Lachan. Huh? Uka. Atonde. Wait one moment. Oh, Tono, you. Oh, la canuka. Oh, silence. So, Paul Dano, you are not dead. Not a moment since Temur came to report your death to the council, and now. A false report, Monsieur Lachan. As you see, I am very much alive. But your clothing, Dano. Here, uh, this bloodstained shirt. It is my Nuka. But with your permission, Monsieur Lechan, I would speak with you and Nuka alone. As you will, Paul Darno. Andak, Atari, Bangaruktu. Okay. Speak now, Paul Darno. We are alone. My friends, the Atari, Temur, and Poltar are traitors. What? what? Temur, Temur and Poltar traitors? traitors? Raymond, Raymond. I overheard them plotting to carry the plans of our campaign to Atea. My Rator, what is this you say? But Timur is a noble, a chief. You accuse without proof, Paul Darno. I have the evidence in Timur's own quarters. If you will come with me. Lead on. Come, Muka. Yes, yes, my father. But, Darno, I still do not understand. Temur presented your torn and blood-stained clothing as evidence that you had been killed by lions. Uh, they trapped me as I listened. They spoke in English so that their conversation could not be understood. They took my shirt and sprinkled it with my own blood. It was Temur's intention to kill me later and throw my body to the lions because I knew him for a traitor. If you were held in Temur's quarters, how did you escape? By cutting the cords that bound me while he was reporting my supposed death to you. When he returned, I attacked and wounded him with one of his own swords. And the Atari Poltar? Awaits Temur in the elephant paddocks. Temur was to receive your permission, Monsieur Lechan, to lead the advance scout guard. And Enough. when you... You would not know that unless you had overheard their plans. Here, the door to Temur's quarters. Come. Follow me. But I do not see Temur. In his private chamber, Pala, that door. Hmm. Your evidence, Paul Dano, has vanished. These quarters are deserted. <laughs> In the city of Tor, Atea, furious at the failure of her plans for the public whipping and humiliation of Tarzan and his friends, strides angrily back and forth in her apartment. With savage anger, she berates everyone about her. And you, Mungo, the mighty Mungo, who permits himself to be tossed from the back of an elephant like a novice. Speak. What have you to say for yourself? Black Maluk, wild, untrained. He take Mungo by surprise. By surprise. It is in my mind to send you back to the paddocks until you have learned how to ride and handle your mounts. After seeing you tossed like a straw, I should not be surprised if this Tarzan of the Apes kills you in the arena. Mm, Tarzan, not Black Maluk. Tarzan no can kill Mungo. I am not so sure of that, no. And you, Wang Tai, how did these men free themselves from their bonds? You stood close... You must have seen. That 
Majesty is beyond the comprehension of this present. I saw them bound fast to the stakes. Having a desire to continue in an ordinary existence, this person did not tarry at the approach of the elephant. Ah, cowards, all of you. And now, where is this Tarzan? Where are his companions? Speak, Mungo. They no escape. Many guards and warrior patrol walls and street. Well, we find... Your guards and warriors are children. They have let the two of these white strangers escape from under their very noses. But these others will not win free. Loose the hunting lions, all of them. Warn the people from the streets. Go, strike the warning gong. Arukatea. Where Mungo him find Tarzan? You, you, Janet Burton, are the cause of all this. Since your arrival, I have had nothing but trouble, humiliation, ill fortune. But now it is finished. No longer shall I withhold my vengeance. Guard! Bunny! Arukatea, Rukbano! Janok Lala Panok, Tumumbo Tal Mengri! We shall see, woman, if your friends can save you from the chamber of serpents. Andaka Bunny! <laughs> Surrounded by savage, yellow-skinned guards, Jeanette is led from the room. Down a long flight of narrow stone steps through a dank corridor to a heavily studded door fastened on the outside by a wooden bar. The door is opened. Jeanette is thrust roughly into a crescent-lighted circular stone chamber. Behind her, the barrier thuds shut. A low hissing draws her gaze to a round opening in the foot of the wall opposite the door. The cold, clammy hand of horror touches her spine as, fascinated, she watches a huge black king cobra slide from the opening. The deadly reptile pauses, lifts its flat, wickedly hooded head to stare with cold, unwinking eyes. Then, weaving slowly from side to side, the great serpent glides.